Hello everybody, this is Mrs. Snook with section 6.6, .6, which is about trapezoids and kites. And our objective is to verify and use properties of trapezoids and kites. So first up, the definition of a trapezoid is a quadrilateral, so four-sided figure, that has exactly one pair of parallel lines. So if you look at our picture here, right there, those are your parallel lines. And in shorthand, I would write trapezoid implies one pair parallel lines. Now the next kind of trapezoid is the isosceles trapezoid. And just like the isosceles triangle, which has legs congruent, the isosceles trapezoid has legs congruent. So if you look at trapezoid ABCD, our parallel sides are going to be AB and DC. Okay? The legs are AD and BC. And in shorthand, isosceles trapezoid implies legs are congruent. So on here, line segment AD is congruent to line segment BC. The next thing to note is the base angles of the trapezoid are congruent. Again, isosceles trapezoid. Now there's two sets of base angles in an isosceles trapezoid. The first set is at the top, angle A and angle B. They are congruent. And then at the bottom, angle D is congruent to angle C. And then the last thing about an isosceles trapezoid is the diagonals are congruent. So if I put in some diagonals, so D to B, there's one diagonal. A to C, there's the other. Those diagonals are congruent to each other. So isosceles trapezoid implies congruent diagonals. Okay. So that information allows us to do all sorts of problems using our algebra skills. So let's have some fun with this. First, we have in number one, we have an isosceles trapezoid. I know that the angle up in the corner is 58 degrees, and I'm asked to find the missing angles. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say that angle one equals 58 degrees, and that's because on an isosceles trapezoid, my base angles are congruent. And this is isosceles trapezoid. Okay? So that gives me one. I still need to get two and three. Now two and three are congruent with each other, but they're not congruent with the 58 or the one. But I want to check this out for you. I have a set of parallel lines right here. Here's a transversal. So angle one and angle two are same side interiors. Think back to chapter three. So then angle one plus angle two equals 180 because same side interiors are supplementary. So then just plug in the 58 that we know, add angle 2, you should get 180. So then angle 2 has to be 122 degrees. Now I know that angle 2 and angle 3 are congruent because in an isosceles trapezoid, your base angles are congruent. So I can then say that angle 3 also is 122 degrees. Okay, not too bad, was it? Now take a look at our isosceles trapezoid in number two. This time I've got two variables. I have an X and a Y. 
So I'm going to write two equations, two variables, two equations. So I'm going to look at the x's, and I notice that I have 6x plus 20, and I have 4x, and those are on same side interiors. So I'm going to write my first equation is going to be 6x plus 20 plus 4x equals 180 degrees. Those are same side interiors. So then combine my like terms, I get 10x, and if I subtract 20 from both sides, I get that equal to 160, then x equals 16. So I got x, now I need to get y. Well, y is a base angle with the 6x plus 20. So I can say y equals 6x plus 20. That's the geometry there. Just plug in that x. So y equals 6 times 16 plus our 20. And I get 6 times 16 plus 20. I got 116. Alrighty, now the next idea is the trapezoid mid-segment theorem. And it's just like the mid-segment of a triangle. So the mid-segment of a trapezoid connects the midpoints of the legs. So if you look in our picture here, right here we have our mid-segment. I'm going to go ahead and highlight it. That's our mid-segment, and you see how it's connecting the midpoints of the legs? Just like in the triangle mid-segment theorem, it's going to be parallel to the base, but a trapezoid has two bases. So, this is parallel, that's parallel, and that's parallel. I've got two bases in the trapezoid. And also because I have two bases, it's not one half of the base in length. It's going to be one half of the sum of those two bases. So let's go ahead and use this information here. We're going to find the length of x, y in number 3. I know my first base, st, is 15, and my second base, vu, is 6. So x, y is going to be 1 half the length of st plus the length vu. That's the geometry. Now all I'm going to do is plug in the numbers that I know. So I get 1 half of 15 plus 6. And go ahead and calculate that. And you get a 10.5. And that's your length of x, y. All right. Now take a look at number 4. And this time, all I have are expressions for the lengths of those segments. So I know that my mid-segment, which is TU, that is 4x plus 7.5, that equals 1 half. And then I'm just going to add those other two segments together. 8x plus 3 plus 4x. That's my geometry. Now I'm just doing algebra. I'm going to combine my like terms. And then distribute. OK, subtract the 4x from both sides, and you get 2x. Subtract the 1.5 from both sides, you're going to get 6. So then x equals 3. Okay, Not too bad. Now let's move into kites. Now kites looks like this shape. It literally looks like a kite. They're quadrilateral. They have exactly two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. So kite implies two pairs of a consecutive congruent sides. So on my picture, 
those two are consecutive sides because they touch. And then the other two are also consecutive sides. So those are the ones that are congruent, the top two and the bottom two. And the next thing it tells me is in a kite, the diagonals are perpendicular. So I'm going to draw in my diagonals. And I'm going to say kite implies perpendicular diagonals. Okay. And I'm going to mark a perpendicular there with that box. The next is one diagonal gets bisected. And you can tell that the one going vertically, that one's not bisected. But the one going horizontally is. So I'm going to mark that. Kite implies one diagonal bisected. The next thing is in a kite, one pair of opposite angles are congruent. So kite implies one pair opposite angles congruent. I'm going to change colors to red to make it easier to see those. And these ones right here, on the diagonal that's bisected, those are the angles that are congruent. And then the last thing is that a kite implies that one pair of opposite angles are bisected. And those are the angles on that long diagonal. So the two at the top and the two at the bottom are bisected. So with that information, we can have ourselves some fun and we can find um, some angles and side lengths in this kite, um, F, G, H, I, that's your kite. K is the point where the diagonals meet in the middle. And we're going to start off knowing that the measure of JFK is 38 degrees, and the measure of KGH is 63 degrees. Okay? So first thing it asks us, what is the measure of FKJ? Well, FKJ, that's where our diagonals intersect. It has to be perpendicular because this is a kite. So that equals 90 degrees. Now the next thing it wants is FJK. I'm on number six now. I'm going to highlight this triangle right here. FJK. So in that triangle, I know two of the angles. I have a 90 degree angle and a 38 degree angle. Three angles in a triangle add up to third to a 180, right? So therefore, my angle FJK is going to be 180 minus those other two angles. And I get 52. Okay? So this one here is 52. The next thing it says is find the angle of FKG. Perpendiculars um, because the um, diagonals are intersecting there. So I have another 90 degree angle. And it says the angle of KFG. Well, KFG is up here at the top, and I know that those two angles at the top are bisected. So since the one is 38 degrees, the other one is also 38 degrees. Angle FGK. FGK is over here. We have another triangle where I know two of the angles. This one is 38. Okay. So I'm just going to um, do that one. So FGK. I'm going to redraw that triangle just so you can see it. It's actually going to turn out to be the same as what we did. 
So here's G, here is F, here is K. This one is 90. I know this one is 38. And basically, I already did this calculation before, and I found out that the third angle is 52 degrees. Remember your third angle theorem. When I have two angles in a triangle that are congruent, the third one is also congruent. So I didn't even have to draw my picture. I could have just said 52 degrees. All right, now GKH. GKH, that's another perpendicular. So that's 90. KHG. So that one I am going to have to draw my triangle for. I don't have any um, sneaky tricks. But I do know this is 63. This is here at G. I have a right angle here. And I know that those um, three angles in that triangle have to add up to 180. And I've got a 90 and a 63 already. So I'm going to say that this one is going to be 180 minus my 90 plus 63. And when I do that, I get 27 degrees. This angle right here is 27. Now it wants to know the measure of angle F, J, um, sorry, K, J, H. Because this is perpendicular, I have a perpendicular here. I have a 27 there because these are bisected. So again, I've got the same two angles as I had before. So third angle theorem again. That means I've got the 27s that are the same and the 90s that are the same. So then this angle over here has to be 63. All right. Last thing for this kite. If FG, which is one side, I'm going to go ahead and erase all the markings that I've done so we can start with a fresh, uh, fresh uh, sketch here. All right, so FG is 4.25. What's JF? Well, in a kite, they're congruent. So JF is also 4.25. JK, I know, is 8.5. And I know that that diagonal is bisected. So that means that over at KG, I also have 8.5. So all the way across from J to G is 8.5, and you double that. So that's going to give you 19, 17. Okay? Just a little bit more to do. Number 15, we have a kite, and I am told some of the angles. I have a 3x plus 6 at the top, 2x plus 6 at the bottom, and a 4x. And I also know that because this is a kite, I have a 90 degree angle in there. So I'm going to use the triangle sum theorem and add 4x plus 2x plus 6 plus 90 equals 180. And go ahead and let's combine our like terms. So I have 6x plus 96 equals 180. 6x is going to be 84. And then x equals, so do 84 divided by 6x. Eighty-four divided by six, and I get fourteen. So now x equals fourteen. The other one, number sixteen, I have an x and a y, two variables, two equations. I'm going to play the same game that I did in fifteen, and I'm going to use triangle sum theorem. I'm going to say three x plus one plus seventeen x plus one plus 38 equals 180. That's the geometry. Now combine your like terms and solve for x. I get 20x plus 40 equals 180. 20x equals 
140, x equals 7. So I've got x. The next equation I'm going to write has to do with the fact that opposite, um, one pair of opposite angles in the kite are congruent. So 2y equals 17x plus 1. So 2y equals 17 times 7 plus 1. Just go ahead and calculate that. 17 times 7 plus 1 is 120. Then divide both sides by 2, and I get y equals 60. All right, everybody, that's it for today's lesson on trapezoids and kites. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.